Freedom Law Center, Software Freedom Law Center. Sounds awesome. Okay, so she's here to talk to you about how she has how to put how to put a proprietary software quite literally next to her heart. In my heart, actually. In her heart. In, my In her heart. heart. Well, next to you, connected to my heart. Um, my name is Karen Sandler. I'm a lawyer at the Software Freedom Law Center, and I'm here to talk to you about my life, my health, and my work. Um, I'm very lucky to be a lawyer at the Software Freedom Law Center. SFLC is a nonprofit organization uh, set up to help free and open source software projects. We give pro bono legal advice to people working on free and open source software. Now, most of you probably know, but free and open source software is software that can be shared, studied, copied, modified, and distributed. And we say free is in freedom. I've crossed out the PowerPoint because my presentation was created in open office. Now, right? Now, open office can actually create a lot prettier presentations than mine. Anyway, about a year and a half ago, I discovered that I have a heart condition. I have um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which means that I have a large heart, an enlarged heart. In fact, I have a huge heart. My heart is three times as big as a normal person's heart. <laughs> three sizes too big, um, which is actually okay. I accidentally found out about it. Um, I don't have any symptoms. I'm fine, but I have a very high chance of suddenly dying. And <laughs> suddenly dying, the medical term is actually sudden death. Um, and so I went to see all these doctors and they're like, oh my God, you need to do something about this because you could just drop dead. Um, if you hear of athletes who are running marathons that suddenly drop dead, that's probably what they have. Um, anyway, so there's a fix to this and that's, you can't see it very well here, but that's a medical device, which I have right here with me as an example in my body. Um, and uh, it's a defibrillator and what it does is um, it's connected to my heart with leads and if something happens and I go into sudden death, there's a shock. So I don't have to go around waiting in airports for one of those defibrillators that you wonder, whoever uses that? And instead, it's like I have this fairy godmother in my heart always looking after me. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, of course, while I was figuring out whether I should get this or not, I was highly alarmed because getting a piece of electronic equipment implanted in my body was maybe, you know, it was a bit much. Becoming a cyborg, I don't know, it seemed like quite a, quite a step, but I knew I would always be safe. And so I thought, well, there are good things about being a cyborg. I would be enhanced. I would be better. Um, and I wouldn't have to worry about suddenly dying, which is really important. But I called the medical device companies and asked them what, um, whether I could get the code for my medical device, and I was, of course, told no. So my medical device is actually a proprietary software device. And I'm a lawyer at the Software Freedom Law Center. And I have to be, I have to have a proprietary software device actually connected to my heart. And aside from the irony, it's very important because this is actually connected to security. If the software can't be studied by everyone, then it's not as safe. Um, little, um, you know, um, well, anyway, you know. Um, <laughs> things were further complicated by, um, by a study that was published about a month or two before uh, I got my surgery. And that was by, um, it was uh, by a group, the Medical Device Research Center. And what they did was they hacked into these medical devices. They put it in uh, meat to simulate a human body. And, um, and what they found was that the uh, wireless transmissions were actually not encrypted. So they were able to talk to the devices and actually affect their function. So they could cause shocks, they could, um, they could change their functioning, and also they could get your name and information about your medical condition. So it, it's not just about security, but it's also about privacy. Um, so these are all things that I was wrestling with when I was trying to figure out whether to get one or not. So I talked to my doctors. My doctor said, what are you worrying about? Um, and I tried to explain to them why it was so important. And I had to resort to saying, well, a lot of important people have these heart devices, like our former vice president. Um, and one doctor that I talked to actually hung up on me. He was so frightened by what I was saying. And the question is, are our doctors really doctors or are they mechanics? Um, so, you know, I think that doctors really need to think about what they're doing and whether they're implanting safe devices. Patients are the consumers. This is actually my father. He got a medical device five days ago and um, he's doing great. But, um, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> But, um, but patients are consumers and they need to insist that their devices are safe. Their health comes first, but we need to insist that we're safe on all levels. 
these are the prominent medical device companies, and they need to understand that their business model is actually going to be safer if they make our devices safer. Um, so that's a message that we need to get out to them. And so I end with, unchain my heart. Make my code free so that I can look at it. I can see the code that's in my heart. And make the devices encrypted for crying out loud. Anyway, thank you very much.